Hello, 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 friends. Happy, happy Monday. And guess what day it is? It's a happy day for you. Each and every Monday is Monday Nurses Life. And of course, we always have some interesting news or things to share each and every Monday. So welcome, 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 or as they say, buckle up and let's get ready to go. We are continuing our discussion about who? About you. It's all about nursing. So today you have joined me, Sharon Herbert, the Power RN, here at Monday Nurses Life and Monday Nurses Life is brought to you by Power in Nursing Innovations, where, of course, sharing is caring. So, we want to just do a little catch-up. We're doing a fill-in-the-blanks. On yesterday, which was Sunday, we uh, had a short, short version of Power Time, but it was a preface to today and to the future of nursing. So we'll just give you a little fill in. If you missed it, there is a replay and you can go back to that and fill in the blanks. But also we will today be following up with part two of yesterday's message, which was don't let fear hold you back from stepping into your successful future, the success that you desire. So we talked a little about that, and it's really a wake up. It's a wake up for the future of nursing, and we have got to pay attention to where we are today and what is going on in our communities and organizations and what the future may look like. And that's why we're here today. And as I say, today is part two of that discussion. So all are welcome to comment and reply and ask questions. Hmm, because it's always interesting. But the future of nursing, this is a real quick summary, the future of nursing is about you. It's not about the past. It might not even really be like yesterday. We are kind of putting a, you know, sticky on the past and looking into the future. So that's the thought for today as we talk about our presentation Overcome your fear. Overcome your fear and turn your vision into your future. We're talking about the future of nursing. The past is the past. We need to let that stay in the past and take away what we need from that and put a dash to all of the fear of yesterday and grow from those challenges to make our future of nursing a successful place, whether it's workplace, whether it is personal and professional stressors, challenges, we need to look at what has happened, put it away, and move forward to the future. So that is overcoming your fear, your fear of yesterday, your fear of not being able to speak, your fear of having to work too many days, too many overtimes, not enough sleep, not enough eating, not enough time with your families. We recognize and acknowledge that. And we are going to put that away and talk about how we move forward. How do we move forward? So welcome back. Welcome back. And today we'll continue our journey, our journey to a fearless 
and successful future as nursing professionals. We can't sit and wait for someone else to determine our next steps. We must put those puzzle pieces together, work together to create the future of nursing. Why would we wait for other people to determine what we need to do, how we need to do it, what we need to wear, when we need to come in, when we need to go to break? Why do we need to have other people determine what we can speak about, what we can write in our notes, how we can write our notes, when we can write our notes? All of these things, we know the answers to the questions. Staffing, we know how we can fix it. Now, that does not mean that every single nurse is an angel. I know we see the buttons and, you know, markers and the banners and nurse angels. Well, you know, we are people. So every single nurse is not an angel, but every single nurse knows how it feels to be stressed in the workplace. So what are we going to do about that? What are we going to do? How do we overcome the fears and turn our own visions into our future? And if you have had a chance to look at the picture that's attached to today's uh, class, you'll see a little girl. Yeah, I just threw her in there because that's me. I'll tell you, I'm going to tell you right off, that story of that little girl made it all the way to being the nurse that she wanted to be. Okay, you're like, why is she telling me that? Well, I'm telling you this to encourage you. You could probably see, oh, that picture is really old. I'm not going to tell you more about that, but you can decide if that's what she looked like then. That's not what she looks like now, but the most important part is that she made it through from that dream as a five-year-old to becoming the nurse that she wanted to be. And that was a long time ago. When did you decide that you would be a nurse? That's a thought for you. You can fill that in. When do you remember when you decided to be a nurse? For me, it was in kindergarten and I kept holding on to that dream until I made it through. And no, it wasn't easy and no, it wasn't snappity snap, oh, all done. No, there was a lot of work and a lot of time put into that dream. To that dream. And no, no one in my family was a nurse. No one was a doctor. No one was a health provider. They probably didn't even know about health providers then. But <laughs> anyway, anyway. I just decided that I would be that. My mom had two friends who were nurses and they were pretty cool and they dressed nicely with their crisp uniforms and they had houses and cars along with their working and their children. And I thought, well, that seems pretty cool. So I kept that dream. And along the way, I really found out other components of the dream profession that I didn't know, but that didn't stop me. I went on through um, middle school and to high school, I wanted to be a candy striper. And that was a student in mid mid-level school, which is middle school, or high school that fulfilled the qualifications, etc., etc., etc. Okay, that didn't work out for me. I wasn't happy about that, but I put all of my focus into 
fulfilling my dream. I graduated high school early. I took extra classes during high school so that I could continue with my fabulous grades, get extra credits, and graduate early so that I could go to college to become a registered nurse, bachelor's prepared, of course. And that worked out well with a few bumps in the road. There are always bumps in the road. But today, let's explore how you can overcome those fears, like math for me, that can get you on your journey. But having said that, we will discuss three components of this journey that will put you on your way to being the best nurse and having the best nurse life. Now remember, this is not magic, right? This is not magic there. This is not magic, but there are things you already know and these things we can use to grow to success today in nursing, tomorrow in nursing. So let's talk about those three things. You've heard these before. So let's go. Three P's. And the first is passion. The second is purpose. And the third is practice. So we'll explore how passion, purpose, and practice join together. They join together on this journey to create the path towards realizing your dream, your dream of being a nurse. And way back when, I didn't know anything about those three Ps. As I told you, I went along with what I saw. And today, as we talk about passion, purpose, and practice, remember who we are. And as we know each other, as the family of nursing, we'll use references to, as I call it, nurse talk and nurse life. Is that okay? If that's not okay, jump on to the comments and let us know where we can do better. And as we are again, our topic we are talking about overcoming those fears of yesterday, whether it's all of that mandatory overtime, not enough sleep, your Skype schedule is crazy, blah, blah, blah. And the first item that we will talk about in reference to this journey is passion. And passion is so easy to describe. Passion is your fire. Does anyone know? Has anyone been passionate about anything? It could be your love of brownies or chocolate chip cookies. It could be dancing. It could be swimming. It could be anything that energizes you and keeps you passionate, ignited for an achievement in the area that you are seeking. Now, in nursing, I call nursing a passion, but I am also speaking of the passion that is infused into nursing. Passion is the fuel. Passion is the fuel and the engine that drives us to make a difference in the lives of people. You have to be special. You have to be special to do what we do. And you all know that. You know everyone cannot do what we do. And passion fuels our dedication and our commitment to this profession. It 
pumps us up. It propels us. It drives us beyond what may be ordinary for people, like blood and guts, that people say, oh, I could never do that. And you say, well, you know, it's, hmm, it is what it is. You know, blood, you have it, I have it. Someone has to be the ones that can do some of those things. Where, for me, if I never cook again, I would be fine if someone cooked and I could just eat. Eating is my passion as well as nursing. So what drives you to be and do what you do? And as well, passion can cure the fear. Passion can cure the fear of working in the hospital being in the operating room, giving shots to people, seeing dead bodies. It's not a happy thing, but it is the passion. You might even spend extra time with little kids showing them how to put on a Band-Aid, how to take their temperature. It's the thing that drives us. So, what is your passion? Maybe you have more than one. Like I said, I love eating. I love working with kids. And those things that I don't like, like cooking, <laughs> I, I can leave that to someone else. And so, what is your passion? Because your passion helps you set your goals. And it helps you overcome the fears that may be challenges for you in certain circumstances. So it helps us kick up that flame to do what we do. We don't ask why, we just do it. For us, that's pretty easy. That's what we do. Number, and so that's passion number one. Number two is purpose. Purpose. It's like the North Star. It's guiding you. It's your why. It is your why. As passion speaks for you, purpose joins with passion to help you set up the roadmap for this journey. You already know, well, I'm on fire about that thing, but why? But why am I on fire? What, what is my why? Purpose gives meaning to your actions. You can have passion and never do a thing at all. Is that right? Who, who, who believes that that could be true? You can raise your hand. Thank you. Thank you. Purpose drives that passion. It guides you to getting the thing done, staying connected, and understanding how you are connected. Those actions are shown and shine by that North Star. And it keeps you on focus to where you are going. Where you are going is a goal. Your goals, you may have more than one. But your purpose on that journey keeps you moving forward. It keeps you moving forward. And we know the words, keep going, resilience, don't give up. We know those are attached to our being in this profession. We don't really have to write a dissertation to tell anyone why we do what we do. They see you. They hear your stories. 
of the little kid that fell down and scraped his knee or the little girl that fell and broke her arm on the exercise equipment in the gym when she was practicing for her gymnastic routine. They are little heartbreakers, but we know that we are here to help those folks that need help from us. And we do so in excellence. In excellence is our purpose. So think about it. Hmm. Does that sound like you? Because it sounds like me. I know it sounds like you. Hmm. Quick question. Can you even consider the impact that you want to make in nursing? What is your goal? And why is your goal? Is it someone that's in your family that's sick or has been sick? Or that you've seen a champion that you want to model in nursing? Is it providing excellence and exceptional care and helping to improve the health systems? Hmm. Getting more education that helps move the bar of nursing higher and higher in the health system. A place and space for you. Now, passion and purpose. Together, they will align to drive you where you're going on this journey. Knowing your why helps you to set your goals for your next steps on this journey. And those two things help push you through the fear that you have now decided to leave behind. You're not going to worry about, well, I'm not going to get lunch today, or this person doesn't like me, or this person doesn't think I have enough to be on the next level of nursing, or they don't think that I'm really serious about, don't care what people think. You have your own passion and purpose to drive you and motivate you to push through all of that junk that people say. Just, it doesn't make a difference. It really doesn't. Because even if you have all of the external resources, but you don't have the passion and you don't have a clear purpose, you will never achieve the goal of being a successful registered nurse. You never can and you never will. You have to be the one who wants it and no one can stop you. Hmm. So, what is your why? What is your motivator? What will drive you to keep going? Passion and purpose together. Passion and purpose together. Now, does that make sense? Your vision is your dream and your passion and purpose together are continually driving you, continually driving you towards your goal, whatever that is. So number one was passion, number two was purpose, and do you remember number three? The other P is practice. And practice everyone, everywhere, who wants to be exceptional or excellent in what they do. 
practices. They must practice. Hmm. You must practice to be the best you. You must practice. So practice is where the passion and purpose meet reality. They meet reality. With practice, if you're going to continue to be or do, you must continue to be or do over, 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 and over. And you can have your passion and you can have your purpose. Those can be all locked up and shining, ready to go. But don't forget about the reality in the world. We talked about people challenging you, saying you're not enough. Okay, you can turn that off. You can turn that off the way that you choose. Negatively, positively, you know, put your head in the sand, whatever. Get rid of those ex-friends, whatever. But the truth is the truth. Remember, some things in practice take more than one time in practice. So give it your all. Give it your all and continue going. But your truth, what is the truth that you may run into? You may be the young lady or, or man who's sitting at home. They want to be a nurse and they've wanted to be a nurse. But the truth is they don't have enough money to go to school. The truth is they don't have a nursing organization or even hospital or doctor's office in their rural location. They don't have a place to go to school. They don't have a place to practice the things that they're learning or reading about or have heard about. That's the truth. They don't have the resources. They don't have the skill. They don't have the opportunity to build the skill. They work. They have to take care of their aging godmother or grandmother. They don't have the time. Those are the realities that might influence their opportunities to practice the thing that they were dreaming of. Now, each of us may have encountered some of these things. And if you have something to share with your colleagues or oncoming students that can help them along the way, let them know how or refer them to someone who can help them be able to overcome those challenges. That makes me think about, you know, how we employ nursing using what we have. I don't know about you. I'm going to ask you to think about this. We'll take a moment to pause after I ask the question. Can each of you or any of you think of a time now that you are well into your nursing career, think of a time when you haven't had enough of something at your workplace, where you haven't had enough of something and you've had to create something. Now, that's what I call one time <laughs> that I can remember making something out of nothing. And I can expect that some of you have had an opportunity over the last three plus years to find that, yes, your passion and your purpose were well on the path. And then you ran into COVID. Then that was the truth. That changed a lot of how you were able to do what you do. 
and that changes the goalpost <laughs> in almost every arena. And you can say soccer, football, whatever. If you change the goalpost and you move it, or you don't have one, or you don't have a football, you are going to have some challenges. But remember, each and every challenge that we face is an opportunity. It's an opportunity to grow. It's an opportunity to grow. And we know that we flex up and we flex down, as do external changes and challenges, like not having enough staff, having people call in, having a tight assignment already, and now there's an admission. That's a challenge, and that's a challenge to our practice because we have to make significant changes in order to accommodate those critically ill persons who've come into the ER. There's a bus crash, there's a shooting, there are those multiple pandemic patients. We must practice how we're going to manage that. We can't just act like, oh, that'll never happen. So we don't have to worry about that. But even when something new happens, like COVID, we rally. We rally and we engage our passion, purpose, and practice to make a new thing, to overcome that challenge. Hmm. And even despite that specific scenario, we look forward as hmm, problem solvers to make changes and those changes are sharpened by improving our skills. We continually think about improving our skills, how to do a thing better, how to make a new thing. Well, way long time ago in the NICU where I worked, Babies had central lines. Every central line was a Broviac. Had to go to the OR, get the Broviac put in, if their patient was going to be there for an extended time. Well, by the way, and by the by, years later, a bit later, we learned how to, and that it was okay to, have percutaneous IV for these babies and those were put in on the unit. This started with the physicians and then it became the nurse practitioners and then it became several specially certified nurses and I happened to be one that put in percutaneous lines percutaneous central lines on the unit and we did ECMO on the unit. Things that we never did five, six, ten years before. But you take those challenges to make opportunities for growth. Peripheral IVs in babies that are going to be there for several months, certainly a challenge to keep the IV fluids running and to have the baby not having several, several, several infiltrations of IVs. So each challenge you face and overcome boosts your confidence and prepares you for success in the future. Now, have you ever thought of it that way? That's the positive of the negative. Oh, unfortunately, people are sick and they're in the hospital and they'll be there for a long time. 
but we can do things to make their care and service better, make their day better, makes our day better as well, as well. So transforming those visions of having your patients get better and have better outcomes and be discharged sooner than they would have if they didn't have a central line placed and had several, several, several IV infiltrations, not being able to eat, infections, da 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 da. It keeps us going and keeps us flowing and focusing on doing better for our patients, our colleagues, our patients' families, our community. It is something that keeps you going. And those outcomes are best as we get better at each thing that we learn and do. Gets better for those patients and gets better for the community. So that is practice. So we said passion, purpose, and practice. And as your vision has been set long, long ago by your dreams of doing well for those who can't help themselves and need your service, helps you transform that vision into the future and the next truth or reality. The results come from those three things, passion, purpose, and practice. Passion, purpose, and practice. And we can transform our vision, that dream of being the best nurse ever, being a nurse practitioner, opening your own private practice, being a flight nurse, being the head of the trauma team, the CNO, those are not far out of your reach. We can transform those first dreams into bigger and better dreams. Those journeys and the realities and truth that we learn along the way start in your mind started in mine at five years old. The changes start in your mind. And as we begin to grow and change, your vision expands. I just wanted to be a nurse that wore those clean clothes and had a house and a car. And here I am now with my own business as a coach and a motivational speaker and probably more, more, and more to come. Because the change starts in your mind. And soon, your mind and your eyes will be open to new things. New things will come to you as you continue to dream and grow. So welcome it. Your NP practice your faculty position, your book sales, they're on the way. They're on the way. So as we combine the passion, purpose, and practice, we witness the magic. The magic of nursing and the magic of transformation. Now, truly, our visions can change. Our visions can change and grow into tangible outcomes. Like we talked about being advanced practice nurse, being a DMP, opening your own health clinic. We can do it. Those are tangible outcomes. Having a clinic where you are the PCP 
and your clients have best outcomes that keep them at home and not being admitted to hospitals, that's a win. That's a win. And we realize that success can come from what we once dreamed of, our dream of success. And you can also become an inspiration to some others of your colleagues or people you don't even know can help change the world of nursing. Really, it only takes a thought. That thought back in kindergarten where I said I wanted to be a nurse. Well, in conclusion, dear friends, dear friends, remember that that old nasty fear is only a temporary roadblock on the path to your success. Embrace your passions. Let your purpose guide you and dedicate yourself to continuous growth and practice. As you do so, watch, just watch, as your visions manifest into successful and impactful future for nursing. Not just for you, but for all of those you meet and touch along the way. Well, you know what I say about power. The power is yours. The power to create and shape the future of nursing is within each of us. It starts with one dream, one step at a a time. One step at a time. Passion, purpose, and practice are the three components of this step of the journey to the future of nursing. There is so much more that we can do. So much more awaits us to make changes in the world of health care. No one knows nursing like we do. We know how to overcome that fear and turn our vision into the future of nursing. We can do it. Yes, we can. And remember, you can find me on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, WhatsApp, TikTok, and my website will be back up in just a few days. But you can reach me because I want to reach you so that we can work together to make change in the future of nursing and the future of health and wellness is just around the bend. Find your passion, purpose, and embrace your practice. We'll see you soon. And as always, questions and comments are so, so welcome. We'll see you so soon next Monday on Monday Nurses Life. Be well, my friends, and take good care of yourselves.